Hi and welcome to the Evolve CEO Podcast. I'm your host Greg Gillies and this podcast is designed for high achieving CEOs, business founders and entrepreneurs who are looking for ways to expand beyond their business accomplishments, their life and their relationships. We will be taking a deep dive into all topics relating to success, love and happiness and we will be talking a lot around healing, alignment and manifestation which is the key to actualizing ourselves and reaching our highest potential. Look forward to you tuning in to this week's episode. Hi, and welcome to this week's episode of the Evolve CEO podcast. Now, if you listened to last week's podcast, it was a very deep and powerful and eye-opening podcast around dark energy and dark entities. And today's podcast is going to be a segue into an element of that, which Tracy's going to share a lot of very important information that most people in the world are unaware of. It's going to be a real eye opener again, and she's going to get pretty passionate because it's an extremely dangerous area that people are venturing into on en mass. And what we're going to be talking about today is people are looking for expanded consciousness in the wrong places. Now, when we say the wrong places, we are talking about the influx of people going on ayahuasca journeys, going on plant medicine journeys, doing mushroom journeys, and the pop-up shamans that are coming into this world and people that are getting what they call qualified to take other people on journeys without having the skills and the gifts to protect them in the realms that Tracy works in. So I'm going to hand it over to Tracy and she's going to start educating you on what truly goes on because a lot of people, they might go on and have an ayahuasca journey and in the event, they think they have this unbelievable life altering experience because they're seeing a lot of stuff that they are seeing as true. But I'm not going to try and explain it. I'm going to hand it over to Tracy. I think people would get an experience and they would just go, wow, the spiritual, I had this amazing experience, but they don't really understand a lot of what is kind of being shown to them or what it really represents. And maybe there is some shamans that maybe throughout history, you know, were trained in the right way or it's kind of passed down through their culture. But there's so many people now claiming to be a shaman and there's so many different elements as to why it's unsafe. So maybe I'll just talk about a couple of different reasons why. You know, we talked about entities in the last podcast and that they can see all our spiritual matrices and our kind of spiritual information, the stuff we're not even aware of. And they look for our flaws, our holes, our insecurities, even like a strained mind is a perfect place to attach to. But when you go and do things like this, like that altered consciousness or expanded kind of consciousness through actually taking a drug as such, or let's say what people are saying, it's plant medicine, it's not really a drug, but it kind of is. It's a drug. It's your consciousness that keeps you safe. And when you almost disconnect from this and go over to those spiritual planes or wherever you think that you're going to, there's a lot of light energy there, but there's also a lot of dark stuff as well. You better hope that that shaman that's saying they're the shaman has the skills to keep your body, your physical body safe because there are so many entities that can actually attach to you when your consciousness is kind of split in that way. So there's one place they have to be able to have the skills to work with those kind of entities and keep you safe. Otherwise, you are literally just going to pick up so much. I've seen people go to what Peru even like Bali and like all these different places overseas, a lot of those places hold a lot of black magic. You've got to understand a lot of those countries, they pray over lots of different things. There's so many entities and it's just almost like those entities are kind of just thinking, Looking you for an idiot. attachment mechanism. Yeah. <laughs> you, you idiot, I'm going to kind of attach here. Oh, no, and, you know, there's different levels of entities. So if you listen to the other podcasts, you'd understand there's kind of demonic realms and then you've got multidimensional interference and they make demonic stuff look like a walk in the park. But they have the power to do even more disconnection or even like drive someone to the places of insanity. I've seen it. So then you also hope that the shaman can look after you as you kind of cross over into these realms. 
I've seen people do these things and they've literally opened up vortexes or gateways within themselves that then haven't been shut down. And this is just now a gateway open to more and more entity interference coming in. I've seen people, if I didn't help them, they would have lost their mind. It really makes me upset. People are looking for this quick fix, this kind of instant gratification, even in that spiritual connection world. And I'm sorry, it is a sacred relationship and it bloody doesn't work like that. And it takes dedication and work and respect. But when you go to these places... The way that I know it, I know lots of dimensional levels. I know how they work. This is a different place altogether. For me, I would class it as it's like the realm of truth and lies. You're actually shown this big show. It would be like going to the greatest showman and it's just amazing and you see all these things. But I'm talking about really gross things like people, things people have told me that they get eaten by this big cockroach and then they realize that the cockroach was somebody and that they were kind of meant to do all these things and they get shown all these bits of information. The thing is, most of it is lies. There might be some aha moments. You might kind of think that you've got this expanded consciousness from it, but it actually takes a lot in the background spiritually kind of disconnecting or putting kind of implants or things into your spiritual matrixes, and there's not actually the expanded consciousness that you're hoping for. If you can call it out and kind of see between the truth and lies, but most people don't have that ability. I know one woman, who focus was going that she kind of said she wanted to see God and she was shown what looked like this image and she actually called it out and said that's not what God is and it just abruptly ended. Honestly the things that I have seen from these realms there is no huge expansion you might just come back from almost like I said before watching this amazing show and go wow that was this amazing experience but unless you know how to kind of I don't know, navigate some of these things or realize what you're being shown is what is truth and what is lies, you kind of can honestly end up bringing back so much more stuff than you realize and entity interference. And what it does is it actually opens gateways in your amygdala. The amygdala is the place of you're either looking for threat or danger. So you're looking to keep yourself safe or it's looking for gratification. And if you go and look for expanded consciousness in an unsafe place, you open a gateway through your amygdala to some of these places, some of these realms that literally can just keep pulling in more dark interference. And, you know, the mind is a very delicate thing that when it can be overrun, like the last podcast, we talked about some of these multidimensional presence can actually interfere with even thought processes with the mind, can compound that obsession, that insanity, those kind of things. Like there is just so many things involved. Another element I would talk about is the reason when people are growing these plants, it'd be like weed. <laughs> Yeah. Like, let's be honest, once upon a time, if you kind of, if it was respected and created in the way it was years ago, but then it kind of gets modified or altered to kind of um, what yield it higher. So even the energetics. the energetics of that, where did this plant medicine come from? Maybe if it honestly was some shaman tribe from way, whatever, you know, and then it's got all of the process, the way it's grown with that expanded consciousness, but even the intentions behind, I'm going to go and take this kind of quick fix and get expanded consciousness. Even the energetics of that alone is actually a negative. The reason why Tracy can speak so directly about this is simply because she can access levels way beyond the dark, horrible gateways that people are exposing themselves to without being aware of it. So she can offer that level of expanded consciousness in a safe environment. But I want to talk about how this side of um, expanded consciousness is getting glorified in the world and how extremely dangerous it is. There are a lot of high-level entrepreneurs, even CEOs, even big influential people who hold a lot of influence with a lot of people who gloat and rave and talk about it in masterminds and forums that they went on an ayahuasca journey or they did mushrooms or plant medicine or something like that. And they had this massive, big expanded experience. And maybe, yes, they did. But what they are unaware of that most people in this world are unaware of is the levels that Tracy has seen and the gateways that people open up 
and what attaches to them. So you might have this incredible experience in that moment. And we know people, and we're not going to name names, who have actually lost a lot of their soul vibration and have lost a lot of their passion and purpose six months, 12 months after they went through those experiences without even being aware that that was what it done. But they're still raving about the experience, telling everybody else you should do it. And we know that it actually has derailed them. There's no shortcut to expanding consciousness. I think a lot of people are even talking about the sixth dimension and stuff like that. It's like, what are people really talking about? But I would raise someone's soul vibration rate. Maybe you will I explain that. Talk about your friend. She's going to tell okay. you a story of somebody that Tracy was healing and working with and expanded her soul mm-hmm. vibration rate that she was actually working in her divinity and she destroyed okay, it. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I had worked with someone for quite a while. And so let's say you've got the different dimensional levels. The fourth dimension is a level of mind. And a lot of people kind of get stuck at this dimensional level and it's hard for them to know what is really their mind or their ego and what is their higher aspects. Then you've got the fifth dimension that people talk about, which it's in alignment with your heart space, but it's like who we truly are. We start to kind of realize we're more than our mind. We start to come on. It's the class as the start of our spiritual journey. And we realize that we kind of create everything and we take more responsibility for what we create. So that's why the healing process is so important because we discard all the things that we're not and we start to kind of, you know, it's like we expand ourselves. We let go of all these kind of lower stuff that's not really us and step into the truth of who we are. And then if somebody's actually living their divinity, the truth of who they are, but starting to implement it in the way that they actually show up every day that they work, they will kind of start to go into these levels of the sixth dimension. It is a real process to get there and it can only look like abundance. But anyway, I had a person that I was working with. It was a real shame because she actually did it because she thought to herself, oh, if it doesn't go so well, Tracy will sort it out for me, put me in a really awkward position. And she sort of turned up this day and instantly she started telling me. So the way I work with people is I bring the energy into my body and I work through myself. And entities make me feel so sick, like it's really horrible. I can just feel the presence of it and then I have to deal with it and get rid of it. But she started telling me the story and I was just so sick. I just felt so sick and she told me all of these things. And she was telling me this elaborate show and this story and being eaten by these things and then realized it was to do with, you know, a past relationship and all of these things. And then she was shown something else, but she said, I don't need to look at that. And then when, and it was just like this elaborate show. And in the end, I just said, oh, wow, I need to go away. Because at that time, this is years ago, I wasn't really working with some of these really that realm because it's very different to other entities. And I said, I need to go and sort it out. I said, you've actually left some information behind. You've lost more than what you've realized. And in the end, I kind of helped her and said, look, what you were shown was all lies. You're actually meant to look at this and you never picked that up and never looked at it. And so when I went to do the work, I did help her kind of close down the gateways that she had opened and do a lot of healing. But in the end, let's say she was moving towards like her divinity life was going really well and I was really quite upset because I felt like you were doing the work to expand your consciousness why did you go and kind of risk it and her soul vibration rate dropped way 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 down and in the end I said I'm sorry I said I can't do anything more here you're going to have to do the work again and I just felt really sorry for her because she didn't understand what she had really lost that was actually the story about also she had asked to see God And then when she was shown God, she just kind of said, that's not God because it was not God. Honestly, believe me, God does not exist in that place. No high, high light exists in that place. You might uncover a few gems. You might kind of have an aha moment, but you also might be shown stuff that you kind of thought was it, but it wasn't even what you were kind of really meant to expand or look at. And you can actually de-evolve in the process. I've seen other people that have come to me and had this experience. Maybe, I don't even want to say the shaman maybe wasn't that skilled. I'm sure there might be some. I couldn't judge the whole lot, but from the things that I've worked with, this person had opened a vortex and they would have lost their mind. I've seen people that honestly just plays on their mind. A lot of people already have this deep stress held in all their neurological structures and it's affecting so much. And honestly, That is a playground for entities. And if you disconnect from your consciousness that keeps you safe and you are looking for this person that's meant to be your guide on this journey, 
and they don't even have their shit together because let's be honest, a lot of them, how long have they been a shaman for? Do they work with entities? Like all of these things to factor in, you don't know this. Maybe the dosage isn't right. Where was the plant even like grown? In the physical are you actually being told? Are you actually being told that the plant was actually all you know grown by a whole tribe of shamans? I don't know. Like I just there's just this new. It's like the instant gratification that everybody is looking for. And I'm sorry, a spiritual connection does not work in this way. We've become the society that's so shut down. You know, we watch our bloody iPhones and TV and do all these things that are disconnecting. We don't even honour that connection in ourselves and then we think by going and having this experience by watching the show that half of it is honestly just pretty scary stuff. You don't even realise what you're talking to and the power of those things to show you those images. They are not light beings. Oh, sorry, got carried away there. (laughs) (laughs) You've been told. (laughs) This is really, really important. Human beings have always looked for the quick fix, right? And it's getting worse and worse and worse. And the quick fix was around the diet or the magic pill or the weight loss product or all of that sort of stuff, which, yes, it can affect your physical health and it can put you into yo-yo diets. But when you're looking for the quick pill and expanded consciousness and open yourself up to higher spiritual realms and you are not aware of this stuff, We cannot tell you that there is anything more dangerous in your existence than ever. People literally can lose their minds. They can go psychotic. Tracy has actually helped a client who opened up a vortex going on an ayahuasca journey. She would have had a complete and utter mental breakdown and gone into a psych ward because it had just absolutely derailed her. Very Mm. lucky that she had Tracy to release and close down all of those gateways. But those entities, they're really sneaky and they're really devious and they can kind of see lots of stuff. So then it's almost like you might think that it was great and then things later will show up and you might not relate them back. But it is honestly just from what I have worked with and seen and the levels of entities I work with, I would say no good comes from that place and I would not ever touch it. I would never risk my connection. It's too important to me to go in the hope of kind of having this expect I guess I feel sad Greg because people if we're talking back in history like let's say Vikings like a lot of people had these amazing gifts and they would see stuff and it's part of us it's kind of ingrained in us we all have the ability to have some of these gifts and interact more with that spiritual realms or that spiritual side of us but we're doing it from the safe place of almost our own connection, right? Sovereignty. Yeah. And so people now, we've kind of lost a lot of those abilities and people are just looking for that experience because they just don't have it all the time. But you can develop these things in yourself and there's lots of ways to do it without going and risking so many factors that are involved in this experience that you kind of... It's the same same as everything. It's just gotten out of control. Like Tracy said, people are so shut down and so disconnected from themselves and living these virtual realities and addicted to their phones and porn and alcohol and drugs and whatever else. And then they're looking for expanded consciousness in the wrong places Mm -hmm. and they're doing things or we're talking about spiritual expansion, right? But even I see the amount of, and this is going to cause massive controversy, but I see a lot of men like raving and taking and lining up to do testosterone injections, right? Mm. They are literally trying to replace something that the body's naturally meant to produce. And I've thought about doing it myself. And Tracy's like, don't you dare. You need to get your body into optimal health naturally so that your body Mm. produces exactly what it needs. But you've got these influences. I see it online all of the time. Guys that are running companies that help thousands of men become better men, and they're doing these ayahuasca journeys, and they're blooming ramming needles of testosterone in them, and it's just creating this fake version of look at me, follow me, and it's going to end badly. It always will end badly. Yeah. I don't know. This is probably an example, but, you know, things like that movie or that program, Stranger Things, 
my oldest daughter kind of likes to watch some of that sometimes. And I kind of <laughs> want to tell her off because I'm like, Georgie, that's the stuff that I work with. That stuff is real. All of that stuff is very, very real. And honestly, in those realms of going to find that enlightenment through those things, things like that exist there. It's such a sacred relationship and it requires dedication to self and it requires doing the healing work. It's what we're meant to be doing here. We're meant to heal ourselves. We're meant to kind of do the work. This podcast is probably going to get some people's backs up and they're going to challenge it and they've got a different belief about it. Or maybe they've had a, a ayahuasca or a plant medicine journey with a very, mm -hmm. very, very skilled shaman and all that sort of stuff. We are not saying never. We're just saying that like everything, there is too many pop-up shamans, plant medicines, people just taking mushrooms off their own bat mm -hmm. with no one protecting them or sovereignty and it's just getting out of control. So this is just being mindful. And like everything, if you want to have an amazing mental clarity and you want to have the best physical health in your body and you want to expand your consciousness and have a high spiritual connection, you got to do the work. There's no quick pill. There's no shortcut. You can't just go from being disconnected for 10 years and then go on a journey and all of a sudden you've made up for it. That's not how it works. Although, sorry, I would say our work is like a quick kind of well, um, a, healing here, process. Here. Oh. I, you know, I have the skills and gifts to be able to access all of this, I don't know, the healing or the trauma, whatever you like to call it, release entities, all of these things. So there are ways to do it. I guess I just would like people to really think about what they're choosing for themselves and even the energetics behind it. Like if you're looking for that quick fix or just that instant gratification, you're not going to get even all of that honestly factors in and plays a massive role. You know, maybe I'll just tell one last story about, you know, I helped a healer that had trained as, she said, a shaman. And I said, what does that even mean? I don't know. A lot of people are calling themselves these days and I go, what are you actually doing? And one of the techniques that she was taught was working with clients was to breathe entities in through her lung space and then blow them out into a bowl of water. And I just went, are you kidding me? I said, that is so unsafe. And I said, how do you know that you're getting rid of them? And she said, I don't. And she had almost like lost her connection. She wasn't even hearing stuff anymore. And I said, yeah, come and see me. And looking at it, like entities would just laugh in the face of that. Sage, entities laugh in the face of that too. There is so much more high powerful stuff that does not get released or removed in any of those ways. But she had them in her lung cavities. That's on your physical body level. That's called possession. And so she was being taught by a shaman some of these techniques and some of these things. And Scary. I showed her some other ways to heal with vibrational. You know, some people aren't even meant to kind of work in set ways. But I just think everybody, I shouldn't say that, is a coach these days. Because <laughs> 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 we're coaches. Well, not really healers. Everybody's doing this, but how long have they been doing it for? What's the whole background story? You know, where are you doing it? What? Like there's so many more factors to interplay in those kind of decisions. Be very mindful. So that was a big topic. Again, if you hadn't listened to the last podcast on understanding dark energy and dark entities, we encourage you to go back and listen to that because it'll put a lot of this podcast into context. Yeah, it will make a bit more sense about what we're talking about when we talk about entities and the different types that there are. So thank you for tuning in and we look forward to sharing more content with you in the up and coming episodes. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of the Evolve CEO podcast. If you value the information that is in our podcast, please like, subscribe, and add a review to our podcast page because it'll help us understand the value that you are receiving and more importantly, spread the world of this podcast. Also share it with your friends and your family. Now, every listener of our podcast gets a free gift from us, and this is our Nine Pillars of Success, Love, and Happiness Life Assessment. This is the exact same life assessment that our high-level clients, which are CEOs and business leaders, go through on an annual basis so that they can assess and reflect the past 12 months of their life and then plan their desired outcome for the next 12 months of their life. And this is our gift to you for listening in. So please follow the links below and you'll find the link to the assessment page 
You'll also find Tracy and my social media links. We would love for you to connect with us on our social media channels, follow our additional content on there, as we want to provide as much value as we can in the event of helping you create more success, love and happiness in your life. Thank you and we'll see you in the next episode.